You know, there's a lot of content in RuneScape. And the more videos that I put out, the more I'm just going to continually out myself as not doing the bosses majority of the player base has probably already done. Today's going to be no different, as I want to take on one of the easiest of the God Wars bosses, Commander Zilliana. Let me just get this out of the way and give the sad excuse of why I've never attempted this before, and that's the fact that God Wars has always scared me and I don't really know why. I think it stems back to me trying to kill Grador and Krill a whole lot back in the day, and of course dying a whole lot and not having a good record of getting my stuff back in time, which means I just lost a bunch of money all the time while attempting these challenges. Thankfully today, the death mechanics are a little bit nicer, so I think it's time for me to take this challenge on. Hello everyone, my name is Nick and I'm on a mission to improve my skills at RuneScape while hunting down these four items. Following a super simple rule set, I hope to grind my way into greatness. This is Getting Good at RuneScape. Now, God Wars was introduced back in the original game of August of 2007, 18 days after the 2007 old school RuneScape backup was taken. So, in poll number 9 of the game, which was back in September of 2013, 89% of the player base approved of its release and God Wars was added back into the game. Since its release, I have always wanted to grind out these bosses, but Zilliana was never high up on my list to camp. I've always been a melee only kind of player, especially way back in the day, and the meta was always running around the room using range, and it just never sounded fun to me. Well, my current goal of the account is to go for next, and I figured it'd be really fun to take on each of the God Wars bosses first, and why not start with Zilliana? Like I mentioned, Commander Zilliana, sometimes referred to as Sarah, is probably the easiest of the bosses to do at God Wars Dungeon. The meta is, of course, to keep your distance from the boss, running around the room while sending range attacks her way. To make things interesting though, I'm going to attempt to complete both Grandmaster tasks that are here. So there's going to be something else that I need to learn besides just running around the room. Peach Conjurer's task is killing the boss 50 times in a private instance without leaving the room, and it's probably going to be the harder of the two tasks to complete, simply due to me not having experience here, while Animal Whisper task sounds a little bit easier. This task requires you to kill the boss without taking any damage from the boss or the bodyguards, which like I said shouldn't be that hard as you really only have to worry about the mage and range minions as the melee minion is pretty much just going to stack to Sarah the entire time. But we know my track record of prayer flicking and it's probably going to be a challenge nonetheless. Before I jump into things, let's take a look at the gear that I'm going to be using. I am of course going to be using my T-Bow, however the alternatives to this setup are of course the Crystal Set, which does shred the boss here, the Xerix Crossbow, Armor Crossbow, and so on. The difference in ranged weapons is just going to change how long each kill takes, so don't worry about it too much. As for the rest of the gear, I'm going to be taking in a Sarah Coif as I need a Sarah item, Anguish, Assembler, Dragon Arrows, Barrow's Gloves, Zamorak D-High Boots, which I need for a Zami item, Ring of Suffering, and of course the Armadale Top and Bottom. That's pretty much all that I could afford right now without selling too much of my bank, but that does mean I had to give up my Pandos Tacids and my Primordials for this challenge. Regardless, make sure to hit up the wiki for improvements and downgrades to this setup, but I think this gear is pretty close to what the standard is for a lot of people who don't have Missouri. For inventory, I'm going to be bringing in the Serpentine Help and the Toxic Blowpipe using Rune Darts. This combo guarantees a Venom on the minions as long as you don't hit a zero, which is incredibly helpful to speed up kills here. It makes a great spec weapon as well for healing me up when I need it. For the rest of the inventory, I'm bringing in 3 Stamina Potions, a few Brews and a Restore, 2 Divine Bastion Potions which increase range and defense, 7 Prayer Potions, a Hilt to get here, Bones to Peaches Tabs, a Teleport Out, and the rest food. This should just be enough to help me start learning the boss. It's not optimal at all for the challenges that I'm going to be doing later on. So just keep that in mind as you're going to see the inventory change quite a bit in this video. For my collection log, it's as blank as one can get. Except for this one KC here, which to be honest, I definitely don't recall ever entering Sarah's room, let alone killing the boss. So I'm pretty much as new as you can get and I have a lot to learn. As for entering the room, I decided that I was going to get the kills right outside of the boss room, simply because I have the elite combat attack rewards, which allowed me to access the room with only 30 KC of the followers, which should only take a few minutes. Hey, it's Nick from the future here. If you have the combat task done to lower the follower KC required to enter the room, I think the solution of killing random NPCs isn't really that bad of an idea. However, I do want to note that using ecumenical keys here is still kind of the norm. It saves you quite the headache doing this every time that you want to enter the room, and if you're like me, you're gonna die here a lot, which quickly changes the small grind into feeling like you're just gonna spend more time getting follower KC than actually killing the boss. Regardless, let's jump back into it. Now for my followers who are on the same journey of improving their skills and their boss experience, let's break down the room just a little bit. I personally used a guide from Rune Wraith, which is linked in both at the top of the description and the top right of this video. 
It is a fantastic guide that I would highly recommend checking out if there's something in here that I don't cover that you want to learn more about. As for my really simple and quick guide, it's important to know what you're dealing with. For Zilliana, there's going to be three minions and the boss. Each minion covers the combat triangle, in this case it's Bree, which is going to be range, Growler, which is mage, and Starlight, which is melee. For Sarah in particular, she attacks with both melee and mage attacks. It sounds really weird, but you can only get hit by this boss within melee range, even though she has that mage attack. If you're running around the room and she is going to hit you, just know that it can either be a melee or mage based attack coming your way. If you sit around too long and she does have a chance to hit you multiple times, they do come out really quick, so just be ready to combo E if you need to. In short, all you need to do is keep your distance from the boss and keep protect from mage up at all times. This just allows you to hopefully just tank her mage attack if she is going to hit you, while also protecting Growler's attack, and again just trying to prevent a situation where you're going to take multiple hits during a little mess up. If you're like me, you're going to catch quite a bit of melee attacks, so it's nice to know up front. As for the general strategy here, we pretty much already covered it. You're going to be running laps around the boss until it's dead. Here's a top down view of the room and each of the highlighted tiles should give you a clue on when you need to attack the boss. For my setup, I'm using a 5 tick weapon, so I put these tiles down in the general area of when I need to attack the boss, but it's not an exact science, especially when it comes to my gameplay, so keep that in mind. There is one special tile which I marked here, which is going to be the starting tile for when the boss respawns and you don't really need to worry about it for the first time that you enter the room. It's pretty much every time after that first kill. If you're using a similar setup to mine, again, it's recommended to keep Protect from Mage up majority of the time, especially if you don't know what's going on, and use your highest range bonus prayer. In my case, it's Rigor. So make sure to set your quick prayers and slot those boys on before you enter the room. The first kill of the boss is always going to be the messiest, especially if you're entering in the public room, as the minions and boss are randomly roaming around, making exact planning almost impossible to predict. So make sure to enter the room with your prayers up, find the boss, and start running around the edges of the room. It is recommended to run the room clockwise the entire time you're here, but the first kill is always so weird so run the way that you need to to avoid the boss. When you hit one of the marked tiles, attack the boss and keep it moving. For a pro tip, if you're using Runelight, hold down your left shift button and right click Starlight. From here, change your left click setting to walk here. That way when you're running in the room and Starlight and Zilliana stack on one another, you only have to click the boss and you don't accidentally click Starlight. This also fixes the requirement of right clicking the stack and clicking the boss that way. You just have to click the stack. If you want, you can also change your shift click on Starlight to attack as well, which basically flips the normal settings, but it does make it easier post boss kill. So again, enter the room, attack the boss, run in circles, only attacking the boss at marked tiles. After this is done, you can either continue running around the room and kill Starlight in the same fashion or stop and flick each minion as you can. The killing order that I always go in is of course the boss, then Starlight, followed by Bree, and ending on Growler. A key point to remember, as soon as Ileana dies, you only have a minute and 30 seconds to kill the minions, heal up, and get whatever else you need done before the boss spawns back in. To do this, I usually swap over to the blowpipe and kill the minions as fast as possible while using the specs on Growler to get the health I need. If all went well, congratulations, you killed the boss and it's time to set up for the second kill. To make the rest of your kills and your trip easier, make sure you start on this tile, having your blowpipe and your serpentine helm on. This is the venom strategy, as if you successfully hit the enemy in the room, they will be venom, which greatly helps with the cleanup post kill. So when the rune starts, attack Bree as soon as she spawns in. Sometimes the boss spawns just a couple seconds before the minions do, and it's up to you if you want to wait and risk getting hit, which I usually always do as venom really does help out that much. Regardless, if you hit Bree or not, start running around the room in a normal cycle, making sure to tag Starlight and Growler along the way. After each minion has been hit, swap over to your normal ranged weapon and start killing the boss in the same way you've already done. Depending on your gear and your DPS, minions are usually around half health by the time Zilliana goes down. And there you have it, that's pretty much all that I need to tell you for this boss. The only other notes that I have for you is the altar, which you can pray at to fully recharge your prayer every 10 minutes, and it's also a way out of the room. And it's incredibly useful to know how to flick the mage and range minions, which greatly extends your trip dramatically, but don't worry about it for your first couple KC. Of course, you're going to be going to God Wars for a reason, and that's either to make some fat stacks or to hunt down some uniques. Which things get real interesting around this topic. Zilliana's uniques are incredibly valuable, the ACB being around 54 mil, the Ceradomin around 20 mil, and the Rust hover around the 160-140k range. The average Zilliana drop is around 167k, if you include the uniques. If you don't get lucky at all, the average kill drops down to 22k. So if you're using stamina potions, dragon arrows, divine ranging potions, and all these other supplies, you're not going to be making a lot of money. 
and make things worse as you start getting more comfortable boss you may not pick up every item or coin drop given to you in favor of keeping your supplies a little bit longer for gp per hour it's right around the four mil mark but also assumes that you're going on drop rate for uniques and you're getting 27 kills per hour while also not dying and reclaiming your stuff <clears throat> Regardless, it's time to showcase my adventure here, and boy was I in for a rude awakening. For the first handful of trips, I hung outside the room for the boss, killing the minions and watching gods when I needed to do. After 30kc, I entered the door for the first time, and the kills were fine? The minions did a lot more damage than I expected, which really threw me off guard, but soon enough I got the first kill of the video. Getting my frozen key piece. At least for now, I ran around the room attacking Starlight the same way that I just killed the boss, as I wasn't really confident on the prey flicks just yet. I just want to get used to the room and everything else going on inside. Or at least that was the plan, as on KC number 3, I started to prey flick the minions, and I got smacked hard. No, no! Fear not, this death was actually tactical, I promise. I now have a ton of supplies in the room, which helped me get more accustomed to the damage that I'm going to be taking. And thanks to some fancy drop mechanics, I was able to pull 11 kills in my second trip, which overall, I'm going to say is not that bad. But it's not anywhere close to the 50kc required for one of the tasks. For round 3, I was able to get 12 kills thanks to a supply drop, and this trend of each attempt getting progressively longer just kept happening. Which is really good, but my luck in terms of drops took a really weird and horrific turn depending on how you look at it. You see, if we look at Commander Zilliana's wiki page, there's really not a lot of drops here. There are of course the bones, the frozen key piece if you don't have one already, the uniques, a very small list of weapons and armor, supplies, and a very small assortment of oddball drops. However, there is the Godware's rare drop table, which is a little bit different than your typical rare drop table. The tables are nearly identical, with some exceptions like the God Wars variant not being affected by the Ring of Wealth, the Runate Bar is now a Runate Sword, you get the idea, it's just very minor differences. Regardless, I did hit the table a lot, which really, really sucks if I understand the wiki page correctly. According to the God Wars Dungeon variant rare drop table page, the bosses have a chance to give loot from one of the rare tables instead of loot from their own unique drop table. So hitting this table majority of the time absolutely sucks as you could have a roll at the uniques, but instead you get sent to this table, which is nowhere near as valuable as the standard table. I hope I understand that correctly, but please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, because as of right now in editing this video, it feels really bad to see how many rare drops that I just missed out on. Something like a half key isn't going to bother me that much, but there's a rune spear already, and that's not a really good pace to be setting this early on into the video. Regardless, I kept powering through until I got to KC number 45, where I felt a little bit better about going for the challenges. So I swapped my inventory around yet again and went into the room with the goal of getting some combat achievements done. Oh god dang it, I'm in the public room. I, I need to be in the private for these challenges, whoops. Alright, let's try that again. Almost instantly upon entering the first private instance, I hit the rare drop table yet again with the key half. Not too long into this trip, I hit the Commander Zilliana Adept achievement at 50kc and got another key half. You see the trend that's going on yet? Now I knew going into the private areas was just the beginning of attempting these challenges, and it did take quite a few attempts to get the Animal Whisperer challenge done. Yes! Yes I did it! Oh my lord! Oh! Oh I never had to try that again. Oh that was so awful. God I'm so bad at purr flicking. Oh my lord. Just for some fun statistics on my adventure so far here, I've entered the boss room at least 12 times now and have died 7 times. So yeah, hopefully that shows you that even though I have some pretty good weapons, this series is titled Getting Good at RuneScape for a reason. I have a lot to improve on still. But with this challenge out of the way, it's time to take on the Peach Conjurer, which I find is just a fantastic and fitting name for this challenge. Once again, I changed the inventory around to meet these new demands and set out on the challenge. On KC number 94, Oh my god, a Ceradomin sword. We actually see something. Looking like it's falling around 150k, which is kind of depressing. Oh my god. Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I don't understand this luck. I honestly forgot that minions could drop this. I, What is the drop rate on this? This has to be crazy. Slowly but surely, I kept on sending attempts at the Peach Conjurer, eventually hitting the Commander Zilliana Veterans Achievement on KC number 100. 
Now, here's something really interesting about Zilliana, the gear that I have and the challenge ahead of me. To kill the boss, three things need to happen. You need to have stamina to avoid the boss, prior to not die to the minion damage, and your weapon to not completely noodle on the boss over and over again. Seriously, I don't know how this challenge was done back in the day. The Tebow hits were so random, some trips where I could get the kill in under 30 seconds, and other times it took well over a minute and a half to get done. So depending on how many stamina potions I brought in, it greatly changed how many restores I had, which means I'm going to run out of these two things way before I hit the challenge goal. To help fix this, I went out and bought the Ring of Endurance. This expensive little boy cost me just shy of 28 mil, which means I no longer have a melee set at all for the remainder of this challenge, but it does come with a fantastic perk. The ring requires charges to work. One stamina potion dose gives the ring one charge, which is simple enough to understand. If you get to the ring to 500 charges though, the ring will passively reduce the run energy drain by 15% without using any charges, which means you can keep running around the room for a lot longer without relying on your performance enhancers. I didn't really care about this passive effect, and I only worried about its main effect, which is each time you drink a stamina dose, the ring loses one charge, but in return you get 40% of your run energy back, as opposed to the normal 20%, and the effect lasts for 4 minutes, doubling the normal stamina potion effect. With this upgrade, I think I can get the challenge done. Alright, 10kc down, not too bad, doing good on supplies. I've just been doing this all day, and I have a feeling I'm gonna run out of steam real quick, I'm already bored. All right, there's 20 KC and I'm I'm already tired of this. 30 KC now and it this needs to end. I I don't know why this just feels like it's taking forever. Please respond faster. That is it. There's Peach Condor done. Oh my lord. With that kill, it took two, roughly two hours and 25 minutes to complete. Oh my lord. Two hours and 20 minutes to get this done, and I didn't have fun for a single minute. I, I need to change something around. During my adventure here, I noticed that a lot of people were taking in a full mage setup using the shadow, and you know I had to try it out. So for reference, I'm going to show my gear and inventory on the screen as I try to explain my experience with the setup. It is incredibly strong. Do not get me wrong. The shadow once again proves itself to be incredibly strong, but it's at a weird cost. I am of course wearing almost completely max mage, and I found that I killed the boss a lot faster, but I was taking a lot more damage during the fight. This almost required prayer flicking to get done. I did get used to this eventually, especially since I just got through the 50kc in one trip task, but that doesn't mean this is fun at all. The two methods that you can use with the mage gear is of course the freeze the boss with ice spells, which did not work well at all as Ziliana has a pretty high mage defense. After a few attempts of doing that, I just swapped over to running around the room method, which felt a lot more reliable, but still had the same downsides as you still need to continue to pray flick all the minions. The bright side is you can stack the minions together and use blood barrage on them, which almost guarantees a full health bar by the time the next kill starts, but it just felt really risky to do so. Without prayer flicking, I was just sucking down brews, making the ice barrage spell way harder to land because I'm brewed down, Stacking your minions just become a pain, and not to mention each shadow attack costs a thousand coins right now. There's just a lot going on, and I'm not even going to go into how many runes I spent doing blood and ice barrage here. In the end, I swapped back over to the range setup and just kept on grinding away. <sighs> you know what? I'm done. I'm I'm done. I've, I've done nothing but Sarah for the last like four days. I'm done. I'm going to go get my gear, and I'm going to call it here. Well, you heard live reaction there, and that means I'm going to be ending the video. For review, I was able to kill the boss 206 times, only seeing two Sarasaur drops, one being from a minion. Taking a look at the loot tracker, which of course somehow missed 11 kills, I was able to get a total of 5.8 mil. But to be honest, I didn't pick up probably half of these items. So I'm going to say realistically, I made maybe a few hundred K to really pushing a mil here. Which, honestly, is to be expected. I never hit the drop rate for any of the super desirable items. I did die a lot, but I was able to learn the boss solo, meaning I could spend more hours here to eventually see something cool later on. I may just need a little bit of convincing. That's all that I have for you. If you enjoyed, it would mean a lot to me if you left a like and subscribe to the channel, and let me know of what you think of the boss down in the comments below. Do you actually enjoy it? Do you find it just really annoying? I'd love to hear your opinions on this. Thank you so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed watching my misery, and I'll see you guys really soon. Stay inspired.